In this lesson, we're going to take a look at another derivative rule, the power rule. We'll begin by introducing the power rule for the case where we're dealing with a positive integer exponent, and then we'll turn to cases where we can apply it to other types of exponents. Let's begin with the most straightforward case, the positive integer exponent case. To get started, let's recall what we've done so far. Up to this point, we've introduced five rules for finding derivatives without relying on the fairly complicated limit definition of a derivative. We have the constant rule, which says that the derivative of any constant, call it c, is always equal to zero. In other words, constants never change. We have what we call the linear function rule, which says in effect that the derivative of any linear function is the slope of the line. If we have mx plus b and we're taking the derivative of it with respect to x, where m and b are constants, the derivative is equal to m. We have the sum rule, which says that the derivative of a sum function is the sum of the derivatives of the parts. We have the very similar difference rule, which says that the derivative of a difference function is the difference of the derivatives of the parts. And finally, we have the constant multiple rule, which says that if we're taking the derivative of some function that involves multiplying another function by a constant, so if we have c times f of x, where c is a constant, we can take the derivative of f of x and multiply that derivative by c. Let's turn now to our next derivative rule, the power rule. The power rule will allow us to find derivatives much more quickly in a far greater number of cases than our current derivative rules allow us to apply it to. So in particular, we'll be able to take the derivative of power functions. That's what the power rule is for. A power function is a function whose job is to raise the input to the function to a fixed power. So an example of a power function would be the x cubed function that takes whatever you give to it and raises it to the power three. Another function would be the x squared function, the x to the power six function, and so on. We'll begin by looking at how the power rule works when the exponent in the power is a positive integer, something like three. Once we have that, we'll be able to take the derivative of any polynomial function by applying the power rule and some of our other derivative rules that we've introduced already. We'll also see, and we'll turn to this in a moment, that the power rule works when the exponent in the power function is not a positive integer. And in particular, it will apply when the exponent is a negative number or a rational number, that is a fraction of some kind. And once we have that in place, the rule is effectively the same, but that will allow us to take derivatives of radical functions, at least some of them, those involving roots, and some quotient functions where we're dividing by some variable. Let's begin by stating the power rule. Again, the power rule is the same, whatever the exponent is. Here's the general formula. It says that the derivative with respect to x of x to the power n for any exponent n, any constant exponent, is equal to what you see there, n times x to the power n minus 1. So notice what happens here. We start with x to the power n. That's the function whose derivative we're taking. The exponent n becomes a coefficient in the derivative. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent to get the exponent of the derivative. So the new exponent in the derivative is one less than the original exponent. And here again, n can be any constant. The power rule does not apply when the independent variable of your function appears in the exponent. So examples of those kinds of things would be two to the power x or e to the power x squared minus one, where x is the independent variable of our function. And notice there it's appearing in the exponent. The power rule will not apply to these kinds of functions. We'll have a separate derivative rule that we'll introduce later involving exponential functions that will allow us to deal with these. But as long as the exponent is a constant, the power rule applies. Let's take a look at some examples. Again, we'll start with examples involving positive integer exponents. Let's start with something we already know. 
We've already found the derivative of x squared by using the limit definition of a derivative. We found that the derivative is 2x. The power rule can be used to obtain this as well because x squared is a power function. So if we're taking the derivative of x squared with respect to x, recall how this works. The exponent in the function becomes a coefficient and we subtract one from the exponent. So the derivative will be two times x to the power two minus one. Now we can simplify that a bit, of course, two minus one is one, and we can ignore the exponent of one in effect and just write that as two x. So that gives us the same result that we found earlier with much more work using the limit definition of the derivative. And if we wanna find the derivative of another power function that has a positive integer exponent, the work is pretty similar. So let's say we want the derivative of x to the power five. Well, the exponent becomes a coefficient and we subtract one from the exponent. So that will be five times x to the power five minus one or five x to the power four. There we go, we're done. And here we didn't need to do anything particularly complicated. We just applied the power rule and we got our derivative very quickly. We didn't have to do something like expanding a fifth power of a binomial, which is what we would have to do using the limit definition of a derivative. In case you're interested, I'll show you a little bit about how a proof of the power rule works. We'll just look at a sketch. We won't look at it in general, but the basic idea I think will become clear. The way this works is to use the binomial expansion of x plus h to the power n. So if you recall, that appears in the difference quotient of x to the power n. We'll look at the case where n is equal to three, but what we'll do here will apply for any value of n. So on the left here of this equation, we have the limit definition of the derivative of x cubed. So if the limit is h approaches zero of x plus h cubed minus x cubed over h. If we expand x plus h cubed using the formula for a binomial expansion, you'll get what you see on the right, x cubed plus three x squared h plus three x h squared plus h cubed. And then we're still subtracting x cubed. Notice that the x cubed terms will then cancel what x cubed is being subtracted from itself. After that, every remaining term has a factor of h that we can cancel. We're left with this limit here, the limit as h approaches zero of three x squared plus three xh plus h squared. We can find this limit by substitution and we get three x squared. And that's exactly what the power rule would give us as well if you apply it to x cubed. The exponent becomes a coefficient and we subtract one from the exponent, so we end up with three x squared. And to generalize this, so that we're not dealing with the case where the exponent is three, but we're dealing with sort of a general exponent of n, what will end up happening is that when you expand the binomial power, all of the terms will either cancel, or when we let h approach zero, the remaining terms will have a factor of h, that will end up becoming zero. And the only thing we'll be left with is a term n times x to the power n minus one, which is the derivative. Let's see how we can apply the power rule now to take the derivative of a more complex poly polynomial function very quickly. So this is gonna be much easier than it would be using the limit definition of a derivative. And we're gonna use here the power rule and our earlier derivative rules. So here's an example, which we'll go through step-by-step step, being very careful to understand exactly what we're doing in each step. Before long, however, you will be able to do pretty much all of this entirely in your head. I think once you see a few examples, it'll be fairly clear that there's a certain pattern here and you won't have to go through all the individual steps one by one. But let's do that once at least to see how this works. So we're gonna take the derivative of this polynomial function here, two x to the power four minus three x squared plus six x minus one. The first thing we're gonna do is to take the derivative of each term separately, and then we will subtract and add in the same order as in the original polynomial. So this is an application of the sum and difference rules for derivatives that we introduced earlier. 
we're now going to take the coefficients that appear in at least the first three terms, the two, the three, and the six, and bring them out of the derivative. That's an application of the constant multiple rule. Notice now that the derivatives we're left with are all derivatives of functions whose derivatives we know how to find. We have two power functions, x to the power four and x squared. We have x, which is a linear function, and we have one, which is a constant function. To deal with the first two terms there, or the first two derivatives, we'll apply the power rule. In x to the power four, we end up when we take the derivative with four x cubed. The exponent becomes a coefficient and we subtract one from the exponent. For x squared, the derivative is two x. We saw that earlier. For the remaining two derivatives, for the first one, the derivative with respect to x of x will apply the linear function rule. Since x is a linear function with a slope of one, its derivative is one. The second derivative, the derivative with respect to x of one, involves the derivative of a constant function, so that is zero. So there we're applying the linear and constant rules for derivatives. And then the only thing left to do at this point is a little bit of simplifying. We can multiply some of the coefficients, and we end up with a simplified form of the derivative, 8x cubed minus 6x plus 6. That is the derivative of the polynomial that we started with. And the steps for finding the derivative of any other polynomial function are very, very similar. Let's turn now to how to apply the power rule when our exponent is something other than a positive integer. We'll begin by reviewing the types of exponents that we'll concentrate on here, negative and rational exponents. The reason why this is worth doing is because, again, the power rule applied to x to the power n works for any constant exponent n. It doesn't need to be a positive integer. And because of some algebraic properties of exponents, this turns out to be quite useful. One of these involves negative exponents. If we have x to the power negative n, that's equivalent to one over x to the power n. And so if we have something like x to the power n in the denominator of a fraction, we can rewrite it using a negative exponent and apply the power rule to that. The other exponent principle we'll apply involves what are called rational exponents or exponents that appear as fractions. If we have x to the power m over n, that can be interpreted as the nth root of x to the power m. So in other words, the denominator of the exponent can be thought of as the index of a root. And then the numerator of the exponent just remains an exponent. So let's take a look at some examples in which we use the power rule to find derivatives by using those exponent principles. The first example will involve the derivative of a rational function we're going to use the power rule to find the derivative of 1 over x. The key here is to note that 1 over x is equivalent to x to the power negative 1. x in the denominator can be thought of as x to the power positive 1, and then our rule for working with negative exponents allows us to bring that out of the denominator if we make the exponent negative x to the power negative one is a power function. Its only job is to raise the input to the power negative one. So we can now apply the power rule to x to the power negative one. So to find f prime of x here, we're going to take the derivative of x to the power negative one. The exponent becomes a coefficient. And then we subtract one from the exponent. Notice we're still subtracting from the exponent, even though the exponent is already negative. No matter what the exponent is, subtract one from it. Negative one minus one is negative two. So our exponent becomes negative two. We can make that negative one coefficient just a negative sign. And if we rewrite things using a positive exponent, we end up with negative one over x squared. That is the derivative of one over x. And that will work for a great many rational functions. That will work, the method we just used involving a negative exponent will work to find the derivative of any function that can be expressed in the form a over b times x to the power n. 
where A and B are constants. In our example, A and B were both one. The reason why we can do this is because A over B times X to the power N can be expressed as A over B, which is a constant, times X to the power negative N, which is a power function. And then we can apply the power rule to X to the power negative N, and to deal with the A over B coefficient, we apply the constant multiple rule. So that will allow us to apply the power rule to find the derivative of any function of that form, A over B times X to the power N. If you have a more complicated rational function, the power rule isn't enough. And in fact, we don't yet have the resources we need to find these derivatives. So for example, let's say we wanted the derivative of this fairly complicated power function, or sorry, rational function here, 2x squared plus 5x minus 4 over x cubed minus 7x. Well, we cannot find the derivative of this by using the power rule and the constant multiple rule and things like that. What we're going to need here is a rule that is specifically tailored to find derivatives of quotients of functions quotients of polynomials in this case. And we will have one soon. We'll introduce something soon called the quotient rule, but we don't have that yet. So let's set that aside for now. To continue our study of the power rule, we'll take a look at how it can be applied to take the derivative of a radical function. So let's say we want the derivative f prime of x if f of x is the square root function, the square root of x. The key to finding this derivative is to recall that the square root of x is equivalent to x to the power one half. So since x to the power one half is a power function, we can find this derivative by applying the power rule to x to the power one half. So we'll take the derivative of x to the power one half, the exponent becomes a coefficient, and we subtract one from the exponent. Now one half minus one is negative one half. So there's our derivative. The only question then is, in what form are we going to present this? What we have here is fine, relying on the fact that 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. If we want, we can rewrite this without a negative exponent by moving the power to the denominator with the 2. So we get 1 over 2 times x to the power positive 1 half. Or if we want, we can rewrite that using a root as 1 over 2 times the square root of x. All of these are equivalent, the last three items you see there, and they are all ways of presenting the derivative of the square root of x. Typically, what you'll find is that if you start with your function expressed using a radical sign, that is what we have here where we started with the square root of x, we will present the derivative using a radical sign as well. But again, these are all equivalent. Let's also take a look at how much we can extend what we just looked at. What we just did can be applied to any function that can be expressed in the form the nth root of x to the power m, because as we know, that is equivalent to x to the power m over n. And so then we can apply the power rule where m over n is the exponent. Where the power rule alone is not sufficient is if the radicand, that is what's inside the radical sign, is more complicated than, say, x to the power m. So, for example, let's say we wanted the derivative of the square root of x cubed plus x. Well, we can write that as a power. It'd be x cubed plus x to the power positive one half. But we don't have a way to take a derivative of a power of a more complicated function like x cubed plus x. The power rule, strictly speaking, only applies when the base of the power is a variable all by itself, like x or whatever the independent variable of our function is. What we're gonna need here is a rule for taking derivatives of composite functions. There is a rule like that. It's called the chain rule, and we'll introduce it later. But for now, just keep in mind that the power rule by itself can only be applied to certain radical functions, those that can be written in the form x to the power m over n. 